Hey, welcome to Hannity. And tonight, anti-democratic liberals are completely losing their minds over President-elect Donald Trump. Now, left-wing agitators, they've been taken to the streets to try and undermine Mr. Trump's decisive victory, and Democrats are doing nothing to discourage or stop them. Now, while President-elect Trump is talking about bringing the country together after a very long and hard-fought campaign, the left, they're starting violent protests. They're spewing hateful rhetoric and even attacking Donald Trump's supporters. Now, according to the Chicago Tribune, a day after the election in the Windy City, a man involved in a traffic incident was then viciously beaten because an angry mob just assumed that he was a Trump supporter. We've got to warn you, this video is very disturbing. Take a look. Beyond disgusting, but the left apparently doesn't think it's worth condemning. Now, the Chicago Tribune is also reporting that the man did, in fact, vote for Trump, but there was no way the attackers would have known that because he never told them. Again, they apparently just assumed he was a Trump supporter. And last night in Portland, Oregon, dozens were arrested after police say left-wing agitators started a riot by attacking drivers and smashing cars and destroying businesses. So where are the Democrats? Where are the leaders? Where's Hillary? Where's Obama on this? Why aren't they speaking out against this unpatriotic behavior? Now, Democrats love to claim they're all loving the all-inclusive party, but I guess that only applies when their side wins the White House. And what happened to the Democrats' campaign theme? You know, remember when they go low, we go high? Remember, it wasn't too long ago they were saying this. When someone is cruel or acts like a bully, you don't stoop to their level. No, our motto is they go low, we go high. So we're going to take to heart the words of our wonderful first lady, Michelle Obama. When they go low, we go high. Meanwhile, they all took the low road during the campaign. And let me point out that these are the same people who nearly lost it when Donald Trump said at the third debate he would wait until after the election actually happened to accept the results. Well, they expected Trump to expect, uh, accept the election results, so why won't they? There's also the massive hysterical and, quite frankly, predictable freakout from Hollywood liberals. Take a look at poor Miley Cyrus and how she reacted to Donald Trump's big win. It's very sad. I do want to say that I've been very vocal for my support for everyone besides Donald Trump. Heavily supported Bernie, heavily supported Hillary. And I still think that in her lifetime, she deserves to be the first female president. Wow. What do you say to that? Now, she is not alone. Miley Cyrus Cher has called Donald Trump pretty much every name in the book and said if he won, she'd leave the planet. And then there's also Madonna. Now, she was reportedly spotted at a protest in New York City where agitators, they were chanting, he's not my president. And in all seriousness, Hollywood liberals, Donald Trump, he won fair and square. And your life, by the way, is not going to change one bit. Your rich, fancy lifestyle, your Learjet lifestyle, your big limousines, your fancy dinners, it's not going to end. The world isn't going to end. You're going to still make millions of dollars on your crappy movies and do every single thing that you normally do. So enough of the little baby temper tantrums that are going on here. What is going to change is the life, hopefully, of millions of forgotten Americans, the forgotten man election, I call it, who have seen their jobs disappear, who haven't had a raise in years with the lowest home ownership rate in 51 years, the lowest labor participation rate, believe it or not, since the 1970s, 95 million Americans out of work. You know what? Two to three jobs people are taking to support their families. They're not living your lifestyle. Healthcare premiums have skyrocketed for the average American. People completely ignored by the political elites in Washington, and all Barack Obama did was make it worse. Donald Trump ran for president to help them, to make their lives better. And when he puts his policies into place, Hopefully, all Americans will benefit. Here with Reaction, nationally syndicated radio talk show host Larry Elder, and my friend, the man, the Reverend Daryl <laughs> Scott, who served as the CEO for the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. All right, Pastor, maybe you need, you know, prayer, fasting. You know, what, how, what do you make of this freakout that's going on? Listen, the hypocrisy of the left is on full display for all Americans to see. If you think about it, all of the violence, all of the deceit, the treachery, the underhandedness, the dirty tricks, their dirty tricks put Nixon to shame. It's all come from the left. I mean, Cher, I think maybe we can put our money together and get Cher on one of those trips to the moon from one of those private <laughs> companies, send her to the moon. Miley, 
She needs to go somewhere, be with a, get a wrecking ball or whatever. But you know what? I think I think the protest our pro protesters are protesting against the wrong person. They need to protest against the Democratic uh, Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign on how they colluded together and stole the election, the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders might have stood a better chance against Donald Trump than Hillary did, but they conspired against uh, him, stole the election, uh, put their candidate up. She got destroyed by Trump, and now they're upset. And it's nothing they can do but whine and tear up something. We see where all the violence is from. We see where all of this is coming from. They can't hide it anymore. They can't blame Trump. Trump ran a clean campaign. They can't blame Trump for this one. You know, one of the things I think got underreported, Larry, was his new New Deal for black America, for African Americans. Um, if he goes into cities like Chicago and he takes on the violence, he changes the educational system, he creates, if he's able to incentivize corporations to bring back trillions and corporations lowering their tax rate, uh, rates, bringing them back to America, hopefully they'll set up shop in Detroit, in Wisconsin, right. near where right. Pastor <laughs> right. Scott lives and, and in Pennsylvania. This could be a real, real opportunity yeah. to transform things in a very positive way. Absolutely. And, and if I were one of these uh, anti-Trump protesters, uh, Sean, I think I'd have to ask myself a, a few questions. How is it that Donald Trump managed to double the percentage of the black vote compared to John McCain and Mitt Romney? How is it that he got a higher percentage of the Hispanic vote than did Mitt Romney? Uh, and if he's anti-gay, how is it that before he became president, he was severely criticizing uh, the Clinton contributions, that, the Clinton Foundation contributions that they got from countries like Saudi Arabia, where homosexuality is a crime, if not punishment? by death. If he's anti-Semitic, how is it that he's embraced uh, Ivanka's husband, who is Jewish? She's converted to Jew Judaism. He's got another son who's married to a Jew. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, executives who are Jewish uh, in his organization. Uh, and when he gave his acceptance speech, Sean, the, one of the first things he said is, I'm going to address the, the plight of the inner city. How is it that, that this man is considered to be such a bigot? If that's bigotry, he needs to go back to, to racism school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reverend, what's your, what's your word to people that maybe didn't support Donald Trump? That I, I don't think there's any one economic measure you can look at that says, oh, things have gotten better in the last eight years. What is your message to people that may be in that freak out mode because maybe they believe the lies and propaganda of a very biased media? They need to relax, take a deep breath and chill out and get ready for quite possibly the best eight years America has enjoyed in a very long time. I'm really believing Donald Trump is going to usher in uh, uh, a golden age here in America of, of peace and prosperity. I'm not, I'm not making him out to be a messianic figure. I'm simply saying that if his policies are enacted, he's going to revitalize that inner city. He's going to stimulate economic growth. Our, our borders will be secure. There will be uh, this spirit of fear, this attitude of fear that the Democratic Party has uh, imposed upon America. He's going to soothe those fears, so to speak. And we're going to look up and be glad that this man became president. Right. When he, when he said you have nothing to lose, what he was simply saying was, give me a chance. If they right. give Donald Trump a chance, if we give Donald Trump a chance, we're going to be glad about the decision that we made. I can tell you that much. All right. Uh, Larry, last word. Well, Sean, if Obama had done nothing, we would have had a 3% GDP. We've had a 2%, and the difference between 2% and 3% is 1 million jobs times the number of the years of the recovery. So all Trump has to do is reverse many of the stuff that Obama has done, such as Obamacare, such as these ridiculous regulations that he's put on the backs uh, of the American people. Allow choice in inner city schools, and this economy will boom. Lower the corporate tax rate, this economy is going to take off. All right, <laughs> guys, uh, I think you both were very strong supporters for Donald Trump. We were. And uh, I think you helped them a lot in this election. Thank you both. And then coming up today, President-elect Donald Trump announced that Vice President-elect Mike Pence will now be serving as the chairman of his busy transition team. Mr. Trump's senior advisor, Kellyanne Conway, joins us next in studio and also later tonight. If we don't get rid of Obamacare, it will destroy health care in North Carolina and all over the United States. We will build a great wall. And yes, Mexico will pay for the wall. They're going to pay for the wall.
President-elect Donald Trump promised he, the American people he would build that wall, repeal Obamacare. The Wall Street Journal is reporting tonight that Mr. Trump may be willing to keep two parts of it. What are they? Is it smart? We'll explain later tonight. We have the greatest negotiators in the world. We have the greatest business people in the world. We're going to use these great business people. Carl Icahn endorsed me, so many others. We're going to use our great leaders, our great business people. It's time. President-elect Donald Trump on the campaign trail promising he will surround himself with great people when he enters the White House. And earlier today, Mr. Trump announced that Vice President-elect Mike Pence will now serve as the chairman of the presidential transition team. And his family will also be a part of it. Joining us now with reaction is the president-elect's senior advisor, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, I, I, listen, I've, a lot of people have been calling me today about transition this, transition that. Why don't you just tell us? We'll ask you straight up. What's going on? Well, we're trying to form a federal government, and it's up to President-elect Trump to choose those advisors he wants around him on his senior team, key positions, cabinet. It's a very big task, but it's one that's been worked on for many months away from the campaign, Sean, by the transition uh, team that was originally headed up by Governor Christie, who still serves as the vice chair. But it makes perfect sense to have Vice President-elect Mike Pence with this role because, he, the, first of all, most of the transition will go on in, in D.C., some of it here in New York, but, but also because Mike Pence will be the vice president. So you've got a lot of familiar faces, a lot of familiar names on that list, those of us who have been here, those who have been trusted advisors, elected officials from, for Governor Pence and for Mr. Trump. And we're just excited to, to see how Mr. Trump forms his government and his team. I, I, I guess the fear that I heard from some people was that, Will Donald Trump put people maybe that weren't as loyal to him during the campaign and surround himself with people? I, I would argue the cut and run people. You know, they're only there. They're there now, but they weren't there during the tough moments in the campaign. Is that a possibility or that won't happen? Well, we all know Donald Trump values loyalty. It's very important to him, and he is loyal to people in return. But in addition, you want to find people who are qualified and effective to do the job. And I think those are probably the two major criteria for him. Um, I will tell you that there are, are very talented men and women who were part of his campaign and, frankly, who were part of his outside advisors or folks who just supported him and did so vocally and visibly. Um, and if you know, we, we're hearing from many of them, there's a process in place. We have an executive director who's working tirelessly to process some of these uh, credentials and, and see where we are. But I think the most exciting thing that happened this week is the people have spoken. They had an election that's for them, Sean. I mean, I've been in polling for decades. You've been doing this for decades. People finally got their wish. They got the outsider. They got the non-politician. They got somebody who is going to go to Washington as our president who owes no one anything. And that is truly an election for the people of the people and by the people. You know, I, there's always uh, what we call a honeymoon period. I, I suspect in Mr. Trump's case, it may not be as long as he probably hopes for. To me, his job is probably simple and it's probably something he's used to. In other words, he made very strong commitments about Supreme Court justices, about refugees, about the wall, about Obamacare, about energy, about education, about our vets, about national defense and national security. To me, if he just follows that list, I would think those people that supported him will be happy, made promises about taxes, uh, corporate tax rates, repatriation of trillions. If we could send that money to Michigan and Detroit, and we could send it to Wisconsin and Ohio and Pennsylvania, those most depressed areas, people that would want to build factories and manufacturing centers, I think we could see a, a much quicker recovery than maybe we even saw during the Reagan years. Is that something that's on the yes. table? Yes, it is, and it certainly is worth a try, Sean, and you're absolutely correct. If you want to know what President Donald Trump is going to do, go read his 100-day plan. It's there for everyone to see. It is specific. It includes solutions, policies, and I think the excuse of divided government that allows people to get nothing done is over. The 
electorate gave Donald Trump the White House, but they also gave Republicans control of the House and Senate so that he would have a mandate. He would have the tools and equipment to let him pass these pieces of legislation that he has promised. And, and look at that 100 day plan. It's what you just mentioned, but it's also things like expanding educational opportunities. You know, something Governor Pence has done masterfully in Indiana is expand vocational and technical educational opportunities. Not everyone is college material. So you, you graduate high school with a skills certificate and you're eminently employable, especially to an administration that wants to bring back these jobs that have been shipped off to China and Mexico. We also, let's not forget, Sean, we have a, a vacancy on the United States Supreme Court. So obviously that's a big priority. Mr. Trump has all, already put out his list of possible nominees. How certain are you he he'll that choose from that list? Always be. He, he said that, that he will. I believe he will, right? He said that he will. And what's important about that list is everyone on that list is qualified to do the job. And everyone on that list is in the mold of an Antonin Scalia. That's, he said that's very important to him. Some, these are people Without who respect the names. Constitution and they don't make up, they don't make up the law as they go along. Does, you spend a lot of time with, with Donald Trump. Do you think he understands there are now a lot of people kissing his ring and sucking up and he's going to be the president that probably will be the first to cut and run when things get tough. And it's inevitable. Things are going to get tough as they do for every president. Well, perhaps that's human nature. But what I do know about Donald Trump is the man is brilliant and he has fabulous instincts and he read America spot on correctly and his messages and him as a messenger and even his delivery his delivery system through these rallies and through you know, it, through digital communication some advertising but really just his personal delivery system and his delivery style is what resonated and i think that anybody who's going to work in his administration sean will realize that this is his presidency these are his, this is his voice these were his choices people elected him and mike pence to do the job and people ought to be supportive of that if they want to be part of the administration um i have to tell you the never trumpers have been a little quieter since tuesday night they have a right to say what they want, but they were dead wrong. They were just people were just dead wrong about the data, about who is in the electorate, about our chances in the upper Midwest, about our chances in blue states that President Obama carried twice, where I've been saying for months Hillary Clinton's ceiling is 46, 47 percent. She just can't get past it. We have an opportunity. And it's his message. You know what you learn from this election? Quality candidates matter. We were always going to be out, outspent and never but out never outworked or outclassed and his message in the last couple of weeks was positive and uplifting but it was also very tough and very specific but it was not negative and nasty we took all the incoming from the other side and history will show that the woman who lost as the first pr female president of the united states did it in the last couple of weeks with a very nasty negative campaign she paid tens of millions of dollars to, uh, to, to just descend upon Donald Trump, stop him, and it didn't work. People saw right through it. Yeah, all right, Kellyanne, I, I assume you didn't get a lot of sleep this week. Uh, can you count the hours? I, know I assume shows. you can, right? How, how many hours <laughs> a night? It doesn't matter. I'm absolutely, not many, but I'm absolutely euphoric and so happy that, um, that Donald Trump is our next president and Mike Pence is our next vice president. I mean, it's great for the country, and I'll support them any way I can. All right, uh, congratulations to you. It's uh, certainly, I know you put in a lot of work. Uh, when we come back, this is coming up next tonight on Hannity. Real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing the disaster known as Obamacare. President-elect Donald Trump promising one of the first things he will do is repeal, replace Obamacare. Mr. Trump spoke to the Wall Street Journal. He said there are two parts of the law he'd be willing to keep. What are they? We'll explain it when we get back. We'll check in with Austin Goolsby, who owes me money, and Ari Fleischer, and more tonight on Hannity. As you all know, real change begins with immediately repealing and replacing the disaster known as Obamacare. All right, that was now President-elect Donald Trump promising to repeal and replace Obamacare. Now today, according to the Wall Street Journal, Mr. Trump said he would consider leaving in place two parts of the law. The report reads, quote, Mr. Trump said he favors keeping the prohibition against insurers denying coverage because of pre-existing conditions and a provision that allows parents to provide years of additional coverage for their children on their insurance policies. By the way, both Republican plans to replace 
had those provisions in them. Joining us now, former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer and the man that had a very bad week, but it's going to be good for the country because now we can undo all the damage of Austin's horrific economic plan. I guess we can't undo the damage of the debt, more debt than every president before him combined. Now, how do we undo that, Austin? Well, I can tell you how, but it doesn't begin with electing Trump. You're right, it was a tough week for me. Yeah, I'm so sorry, and you owe me money, but we'll just we'll deal with that on, on, on another, in another show. You know, look, Ari, this is going to, going to be a lot harder than just saying repeal and replace, because now we've got to put in place a plan where people can transition, hopefully to health care savings accounts, by... It, it, Every Republican plan included pre-existing conditions that I saw. Portability, job to job, buying across state lines, um, and free market competition for the plans. But now getting off of Obamacare, how long does that take? Well, that you put your finger on. The repeal part was always the easy part. The replace part was always the harder part. But now Republicans have to honor both. I think it would have been more artful today if the president-elect said we're going to repeal Obamacare, and when we replace it, there are provisions that I might want to include in it. He'd have been better off if he had put it that way. He did but, say that, though. That's what he said. Well, he said, and if you look at the Wall Street Journal story, he says we're, we're going to uh, edit or modify, repeal or replace Obamacare. He shouldn't say modify. You yeah, repeal I agree it, with that. And then, I, I, and then I, but he the was very clear on the campaign trail it. to repeal and replace. That's correct. And he needs to stick with that, and so do the Republicans in Congress. But what's going to end up with is going to be a much skinnier provision, probably much more along the lines of catastrophic health care, instead of these government-mandated gold, silver, bronze plans for people. I think you're going to see a much more simplified, skinny version that provides people with catastrophic care. Yeah. I mean, how much will the taxpayers end up having to subsidize as well? At some point, now that Obama took on more debt than 43 other presidents, We've got a debt problem, and we also have a, an interest rate problem that at some point those rates are going to go up, and that's going to impact the interest that we're paying back on the debt. Ari? Well, I, you know, or Austin, I, it, go ahead. Oh, you, Ari? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Austin. Uh, it, uh, I think if, if he's going to start thinking on the deficit and debt way, um, I think that's going to run head first into his tax plan that, that he's outlined as one of his first priorities because he's not proposing ways to pay for that tax plan. So I think he's going he's gonna to have to set some priorities here. I hope, you know, I, I, clearly he won the election. He won by the opposite of a landslide. In previous very close elections, there are different approaches. John Kennedy's approach when he won by a whisker was to say, okay, look, I realize that half the country didn't want me here, and I want to be a unifier, so I'm going to start my priorities with the things that we can agree on, and then we'll move to the next things. I but think you know, if Trump all does this... that, if he starts with the infrastructure, if he starts with some of the, the more unifying things, I think he could be a very successful president. Uh, if yeah, he if he all of roll this all why, would he, why would he this implement runs... your agenda? I think he yeah, should that's... start with the wall. I'm not talking about my agenda. He should start with the wall. The majority he should start of America. With the lowest corporate tax rate, repatriation of trillions. He should start with repealing, replacing Obamacare. He should start with education back to the states. You know, I, I mean. Okay, but look, he won. if it involves 20 Remember million Obama people say, losing their insurance, uh, he, he won. He won very narrowly, and actually more Americans voted for his opponent than voted for him. Sorry? Oh, I just think yeah, you let's know cut to the chase. Let's, he respects Let's cut you. to the chase here. All of this comes down to the central era of our, the central issue of our times, which is economic growth and the lack thereof in the last eight years. If what President, Ob uh, President Trump can put into place are provisions through corporate tax reform, individual tax reform, and policies that get economic growth revved up, it solves all the problems, Sean, you were raising about interest rates, about the deficit, about the debt, about revenues. All of this is tied to growth. And this has been the failure of the Obama years. It's what led to so much dissatisfaction among working class people because they haven't gotten raises. Economic growth is the cornerstone of it all. And this is what the Trump presidency will rise or fall upon. I, you know what? I totally agree. I agree and with that's that. why the lower, the lower tax rate, first of all, will go from seven to three. 
the lower corporate tax rate will incentivize corporations to build factory, factories, manufacturing centers, the one-time 10% tax on trillions right. repatriation. overseas, repatriation. That will be a boon to the economy. And one more factor, energy independence. You know, if we had a goal of energy independence in four years, include the Keystone Pipeline drilling, fracking, uh, and coal mining, millions of jobs can be created almost immediately. And I know that poor Austin Goolsbee won't like it, but the rest uh, of America will. That's not will. poor. Look, if those, if those work, uh, th then that would be great. All I would caution, and he respects you, Sean, and, and I want you to, to talk to him. If he just is going to propose the things that George W. Bush proposed when he came into office, the growth slowdown is not, did not start with Obama. It started with Bush. And it started if he with can Clinton. break out of that, that'd the be great. Slowdown. I want him to no, break no, out. No, 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 Austin. Absolutely not. The growth slowdown started in the summer of 2000. As you know, George Bush inherited a mild recession. September 11th turned into an even worse economy. And the economy boomed from 2003 to 2007 as the Bush tax cuts took place. It barely you know boomed that's the fact. and was followed by the worst downturn absolutely of our lives. Absolutely wrong. We the can agree on that. All right, the we got to let it go there, guys. Well, the Community <laughs> Reinvestment Act. Definitely played a part in hurting the economy, oh, no, no, and Bush no, paid the price. Yes, 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 no, yes. No, no, you can't lend no. money to people that can't afford to pay it back, Austin, Sean, unless you're going to pay it back. Stick to the tax cuts. You're Let's a rich see Republican. if that works. We can agree on growth. All right. Good to see you both. And up next tonight on Hannity, we will build a great wall. And yes, Mexico will pay for the wall. We're going to pay for the wall. President-elect Donald Trump, he promised to build the wall and the border with Mexico. How, how soon can that happen? Mercedes Schlapp, Doug Schoen, they weigh in. And later tonight, Kimberly Gofoyle, Charlie Hurd are here as we continue. A Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. And yes, we will build a great wall. And yes, Mexico will pay for the wall. They're going to pay for the wall. That was President-elect Donald Trump earlier this week promising America and the American people he would build a wall with Mexico. How fast can that happen? Here with Reaction, Fox News contributor Mercedes Schlapp and former Clinton pollster, Fox News contributor, in the end he couldn't pull the lever for Hillary, Doug Schoen. How are yeah. you? I'm very good, Sean. Um, that, look, it's one thing to run. Yeah. To me, it's simple. You make a checklist. Right. Supreme Court, refugees, cutting taxes, corporate rates, repatriation, right. build the wall, eliminate Obamacare, right. health savings accounts, education back to the state, energy independence. You make your list and just start checking off what you promised. Right. He's got to do two things. Be true to his base, which is exactly what you say, uh, implement the agenda, but most of all, create jobs, lower taxes, uh, promote economic growth and put working people who went on a limb for him as as I did myself when mm -hmm. I distanced myself from the Clintons. He's got to let them know that he's got their back. He's working to create jobs. Energy independence, Mercedes, stopping the competition for jobs, right. building that wall would be a part of it. But energy independence, I think, is a huge component, potentially millions of jobs, added bonus national security, but also those tax cuts and repatriation. If he does That's, those, and Obamacare being eliminated, those are three huge components to economic success in my mind. Oh, absolutely. I think you're going to see that obviously immigration and health care are going to be the, two of the top priorities that now you'll have Congress and the president working together to get this done. But I think the tax reform component is incredibly important when you look at the fact that if you can lower the corporate tax to that 15 percent, where the companies can feel that they once again can invest in America, where the capital is, is their capital is not all tied up. And also the fact that if you're cutting those regulations, which we know have strangled so many businesses and so many small businesses, if you mm -hmm. unleash that potential in terms of the, the business uh, productivity, and oh. be able to uh, bring in more more Americans to work. I think it's huge. What I think you, it's incredibly how, beneficial. Right, when the wall starts getting built, is the left going to go insane? Look, there are parts of the agenda, parts, I underscore, that the left can support, which is to restrict immigration and build uh, and provide ways to do that. The left also can support an infrastructure program, 
tax reform for repatriation, getting rid of the carried You think they'll support that? They should if they're smart. If they go to Keith Ellison, if they mm -hmm. go hard left, it could be the end of the Democratic Party. Wow. As we know, it could be for to, me. All right, Mercedes, last uh, word. And you have to remember, Sean, that I think where you can find common ground with the Democrats, actually, with the Elizabeth Warren faction, is on trade. The fact that TPP will be dead under uh, President uh, Trump. And the fact is, is that, you know, the Republicans might not feel too comfortable with that, but it does allow Trump to have the edge of saying, look, we're going to renegotiate these deals and these trade deals, and it's going to be to benefit the American worker. All right, I got to real quick. I got to let you go. But uh, listen, uh, Mercedes, you and Matt might now be invited back to the parties again. I wish you <laughs> luck. You know what? The most important thing is that the American people won, Sean. Yeah. That's all, all right. we care about. We have a chance to fix this mess. And Absolutely. It's a mess. And you know what? Democrats can come with part of this to make this really a great country. I'm not counting on that, but we'll see. I'm going to say it's got to happen. Uh, I agree with that. It's good for America. It would be good for America. And when we come back, Hollywood celebrities are in complete, full-on meltdown mode because... Donald Trump will be the next president. They need to pull it together. We'll try and help him. Kimberly Guilfoyle, Charlie Hurt, and more as Hannity continues. Chelsea Handler, Seth Meyers, Miley Cyrus all cried. According to the New York Daily News, Cher, Madonna, Mark Ruffalo actually took to the streets with fellow anti-democratic disruptors to protest the election results. Then, of course, Cher previously stated that she would leave the planet if Trump was elected. <laughs> I hope she now has a spaceship available. Joining us now with a reaction from the Washington Times, Fox News contributor Charlie Hurt and the co-host of the hit show The Five, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Uh, well, I, I, know. I'm will, I am willing to pay yes. charter a plane for these celebrities yeah. uh, in, in, a, in, in a way that they're accustomed. Yeah, you're not even saying first class. You're saying charter, charter a plane. Charter a plane. Pay for the... What I'll about pay for share it. spaceship? I don't, Can you uh, get one? I can't get a spaceship. <laughs> so, And I'll put on champagne and okay. caviar and steak... But I have one stipulation. Yeah. They have to agree not to come back. If they right. come back, they have to pay me four times what I paid. One way. Right? Exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's so silly. What's wrong with these people? They're, I mean, honestly, there's things to cry about and be upset about. Losing a loved one, getting a cancer diagnosis. When I see Miley Cyrus crying, busted up over in tears over this, I want to be like, silly girl, That maybe there's some Flintstone vitamins that you can take to help alleviate your suffering. I mean, I don't even know what to say about it. It's sad. All right. There is this one uh, Trump guy supporter i saw the, this is really funny because he's kind of trying to help out those people that are suffering and this is what he does watch to all of the trump haters all of the hillary clinton supporters all of the people that said uh that my trump was gonna lose so i say to you this morning the day after election <laughs> All right, that's oh the greatest God. laugh ever. Charlie, what's your reaction to all you, the you, madness? You have to admit that as much as I love a Donald Trump uh, 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 campaign appearance, uh, that montage you played at the beginning was every bit as entertaining mm -hmm. as a any Trump rally I've ever been to. Uh, but, you know, on a serious note, though, you know, why is it that these, uh, you know, they, obviously they're deluded people they, and, and they're very self-conscious about the fact that they're deluded people and that they don't really produce anything of any value to society. But why is it that they're always talking about going to Canada? What, why, why don't they talk about going to Mexico? Why don't they move to Guatemala? What, what, what's, what, yeah, is it because Guatemala. they want to go to a whiter place? <laughs> yeah. Are they racist? Yeah. Wow, that's a good point. By the way, I don't think Canada wants Lena Dunham. I don't <laughs> think she's, she's necessarily... They're going to build a wall. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the one thing the three of us have in common, people have been asking me all week, oh, you probably feel great. I do, but it's not... I feel more relief that there's an opportunity, a huge opportunity here to fix the country. And I call it the forgotten man election because I think... So many people out of work, so many people in poverty, food stamps, they can't buy a house. That, to me, is what this election was about. What I don't understand is how the left, after eight years of Obama, can't see how bad he made things. Right, but you know what's so scary here is I'm having this weird moment because Michael Moore agrees with you. He yeah. said the same thing. This is about when you punish and burden the middle class, that you take away what people really value most, which is being able to provide for their families, to have some stability and certainty for the future. When you strip them and their table bare at their home, then why this does is the Michael Moore, that you get. Then why would he, why can't he say what is so obvious, that Obama failed?
Because he doesn't really he doesn't really care about those people. He he doesn't know them anymore. He's a, he is as out of touch as anybody. He likes to pretend like he's in, uh, you know he's in touch with those people, but he's not. He doesn't know any of them. He doesn't talk. He doesn't think about their problems. But you know, the, the, thinking about the extraordinary opportunity that that uh, Donald Trump has today. Uh, reminds me of, you know, I didn't agree with Barack Obama, but when he first won uh, his first election in 08, it was a stunning moment in this country. Mm -hmm. and, and he did have an extraordinary opportunity, and he had Democrats in Congress, and he could have done so much. He could have talked with authority, unlike any president before him. And he blew he it. He could have done, he blew it. He, every, every single thing that he could you have done, You know the good news is, ruined. Donald Trump will undo on day one yeah. so much of that agenda because he felt he could usurp the powers of Congress, use executive orders, right. and so too can Donald Trump undo all of that. Right, but you know, the charm offensive and the call for unity came mm. in the final and last year of President Barack Obama's presidency, where all of a sudden he wants to unify because Donald Trump's yeah. there and he knows that this is the guy that's now at the wheel of Obama's legacy bus and is driving it and going to determine what stays and what will go. But we've already seen, for all the people who are hysterical out there and breathing into brown paper bags, hyperventilating, <laughs> is that Hey guys, President like Donald Trump is willing to listen and do best practices and put the best and brightest people in and make sure that we do have good quality health care. And he's willing to keep certain aspects that, in fact, would benefit people across the country. So well, I don't think there's any the good aspect moment. of Obamacare, though, for the record. So I know, Sean. None. Aww, you're going to be making the Zero. Miley Cyrus crying video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sean, right. it, th there are going to be some tough things uh, l along those lines for conservatives. There's no doubt about it. Uh, okay. Charlie's a wise man. <laughs> Guys, good to see you all. When we Jeez. come Thanks, back, John. we need your help on what has been a historic week with a very important question of the day. That's next. Welcome back to Hannity. Time for our question of the day. Who would you like to see in the Trump administration? Who would you like to see him surround himself with? Just go to Facebook.com slash Sean Hannity, at Sean Hannity on Twitter. And before we go, we want to wish all of our veterans a happy Veterans Day, and we want to thank you for your sacrifice, for your service. What a week it's been. Very historic. That's all the time we have left for this evening. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday.